So this whole Kanye conversion seems really good on the surface if you're mind controlled in this indoctrinated world. But what I see is something that has already happened in history and is still going on today, some 2,000 years later. And this instance is merely a repeat performance of that, only with a lot more of an immediate impact, thanks in large part to social media. What could I be talking about, you may be asking? Great question. Now, if you've been following along with my little channel here, you may already know where this is headed. So please just bear with me as I fill in any possible new subscribers, which, seeing how my sub numbers has only gone down this year, after having a consistent growth throughout 2018, may just be wishful thinking on my part. But again, those who need to hear what I have to say will hear it, especially if you've surrendered to Father Yahuwah and are willing to put pride and ego aside by admitting you've been badly deceived like everyone else, and now you're ready to sit at his feet, childlike, and seek truth only from him leaving man-made religion as far behind as possible and are now working to build your relationship with him. If that's the case, do not rule out that he may very well have guided you to this channel. That's how he works. He never speaks to our head, but rather to our heart, with little nudges, reminders, to do something. We just have to learn to listen for him. So just keep that in mind before possibly deciding to swipe left after a couple minutes here. Okay, if you had watched my Celebs You Can Renounce Satan video, you heard me say that celebs who have sold their soul should renounce Satan before it's too late, assuming they haven't already been replaced. This is what Sherry Schreiner had to say on the matter. Nothing is set in stone. Satan can't claim one soul on this planet until that person dies. He can't claim their soul until they die. So no matter what he tells them, like, oh, you took the oath. You took the oath. There's no forgiveness. He's lying. You took the oath. There's no turning back. He's lying. He can't claim your soul until you die. You can renounce your oath. Your, your contracts, your agreements with Lucifer, <coughs> and accept Yeshua as the Son of God, because his his blood nullifies any contract you've made with Lucifer. Clean and clear. They may kill you. Lucifer may get mad and kill you, but at least you go to heaven. At least you're not being replaced by a, a lookalike or a clone. And many have. Many celebrities stuck in the astral realms have moved on to heaven after accepting Yeshua as Savior. And yes, you do have that chance when you're stuck on the astral realms. When you're stuck on the astral realms, you're, 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 you're midway between heaven and hell. You're just in limbo. You can choose Yeshua. Okay, so now that you've heard what she's had to say about that, listen to what she has to say specifically on Kanye. Kanye West sacrificed his mother when he joined the Illuminati. He never looks happy. He's always mad. Maybe he's not happy because he's on Satan's crap list. Spends all this time promoting Lucifer and I'll tell you one thing about Lucifer is he hates people with attitude. Anyone with an attitude. And Kanye has a big one. And so Lucifer can't stand them. So after hearing both those sound bites, you may be asking me, so what does that have to do with anything? You said he can renounce Satan, so that's presumably what Kanye is doing. Well, if you were listening closely to that first sound bite, Sherry had said, Doing so would cost you your life, but you will gain eternal life. So how could Kanye have converted and lived to talk about it? How, indeed, unless? The short answer is, 
He couldn't. The long answer? I'm about to explain. Okay, so when you renounce Satan, you are killed, but your brand will go on in way of either a soulless clone, like Jim Carrey and Hillary Clinton, for instance, or being soul-scalped and controlled by a fallen angel slash reptilian, since they've been cursed to look like reptilians. Now, you may have heard me, as well as other truthers channels, talk about reptilian shapeshifters. Well, that's exactly what that is. Now, had the church been willing to explain to us exactly where fallen angels had gone this entire time, well, that would have definitely helped the masses swallow that particular jagged little pill. But then too many people would have been awake, and they can't have that, can they? Now, if you're familiar with Operation Pogo or Operation Zypher, which recently murdered whistleblower David Goldberg had exposed, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If not, I'll leave a link in the description so you can catch up. Anyhow, watch my Ever Wonder Where Fallen Angels Went video for more on that subject, again, included in the description. Now, where was I? Right. As far as Jim Carrey, people want to know why he's acting so strangely the last few years. Well, that's why. When you renounce Satan, as Sherry had said he and Hillary had both done in 2012, after he, being the high priest in Hollywood, and her, a very high-ranking witch, again, you are killed in a satanic sacrifice. But in his case, your clone essentially picks up where your consciousness left off, and you tend to rebel against the system. So they have to have handlers to watch him very closely. Personally, I believe he's being used as a, another disclosure agent during this truth and reconciliation phase of the last days. Anyway, I don't want to get too far off track, but this is all relevant, trust me. The most disconcerting aspect of Kanye's conversion is that it's all a rouge. A rouge that has already been perpetrated on us before and is still going on very strongly today. Now, with most churchgoers willing to defend Apostle Paul to their death, Kanye is an ideal candidate to continue what Paul had started, considering Kanye has 30 million Twitter followers to manipulate. He appears to be having a very similar conversion as Paul had had after first persecuting followers of the true son Yahushua ben David's ministry called The Way, and then having a blinded by the light moment on the road to Damascus, where he became a self-appointed apostle. But hey, because it's included in the Bible, people believe it. Because again, if it's found in the Bible, it has to be truth. Because the dark side has morals when it comes to the sanctity of the word, even though they rape and eat children. But hey, they wouldn't dream of manipulating Father's word, right? That's strictly off limits. At least, that's what they hope you believe. That popular way of thinking, or rather, not thinking for yourself, but through mind control, has been the biggest reason that unthinkable evil has been allowed to go on under our noses for as long as it has. If it's in the Bible, it's truth. And if it's not found, it cannot be true. Period. End of story. I don't want to hear it. La 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 la. My ears are closed. That statement right there has done a number on us for at least 1,500 years. And why Sun God Day Church primarily preaches from Paul's books of the New Testament. Because it's in the Bible. It has to be truth. Making him arguably the most popular apostle of them all. Because he's primarily the one drilled into congregations' heads every week. On the first day of the week, mind you. These congregations, including another YouTube channel, but way more popular than mine, called Christian Truthers, doesn't stop to consider that the New Testament is basically another version of the Garden of Eden, where the Tree of Life is once again Yahushua, but the Tree of Knowledge, this time around, is Paul. After all, there are two Gospels found in the New Testament, Yahushua's Gospel of the Kingdom, 
and you've already heard me say before, the deception of Paul's gospel of grace. A real and a fake Messiah. Only it doesn't say that in the Bible, so it cannot be true. Nor has most realized this fact, including the aforementioned YouTube channel called Christian Truthers, whose only correlation mentioned between Kanye and Paul was that it wouldn't be the first time a public figure had gone from darkness to light. Now I should mention that there are two different YouTube channels in this conversation. Adam is with Parable of the Vineyard, and Justin is with Christian Truthers. But nevertheless, they are both deceived by who Paul is, because they're both in agreement that Paul was accepted by the apostles, and he went from dark to light, completely dismissing the fact that Paul was a total fraud, and the worst kind at that, one who pretended to be a follower of the Son of Man, and a man of the Most High Father Yahweh. And as you can see, they are very popular, over twice as many subscribers as Justin's Christian Truthers, and over 20 times more than I have. But again, people flock to what they're used to. People flock to what they're familiar with because of mind control. So they clearly haven't come to the realization concerning where the term Christian originated. I'll give them a hint. It's found in Acts chapter 11, verse 26. First at Antioch, a book written by Paul's scribe Luke. And they're seemingly stuck behind the eight ball by believing that the word is 100% truth. That Father would never allow for his word to be infiltrated. Now why are they more popular than my channel? Well, I'm sure part of it has to do with their adhering to the Bible as infallible, which it is, but not the way they and most others believe. So the masses flock to what they've been indoctrinated into believing. It's the same reason Cherry Shriner's YouTube channel was way less popular than Jonathan Kleck's, and still is, despite being created way before his. Now Kleck admittedly compares his dark to light transformation to Paul's, and his followers are more than okay with that because of mind control. He, like Christian truthers, don't stop to consider that nobody alive today was around when Paul quote-unquote preached the gospel. And they don't realize who was behind manipulating the Bible and why, or that it was even modified at all. Because they, like most, have seemingly ruled out that from the get-go. So they appear to be solely going by what they know, the Bible, for all their answers, ignoring the center verse, though. I mean, heck, Yahushua's name isn't even found in the Bible. It was replaced with the Roman Catholic Church's fabrication of their son, S-U-N, Jesus, proving the word was manipulated right there. Not to mention Father Yahweh's name was replaced with titles like God and Lord some 8,000 times, but that's clearly not enough to convince the masses that the word has been modified. So, who exactly is Kanye pushing on Sun God Day? Jesus and Jesus. And why is his fan base eating it up all the way to buying $50 Jesus walk socks and a couple hundred bucks for a sweatshirt? Because Jesus is found in the Bible. Now here's what Sherry had to say concerning commercializing his name. Something that Christian truthers do as well. Just not at the same clip as Kanye's nearly $800,000 in merch sales at Madison Square Garden recently. The Lord hates the most more than anything is commercializing his name. You know, I think they can make a ministry in a lifetime out of writing books and making and, and, and writing and, and creating videos and selling them. You know, if you look at all these mega preachers on TV, it's, it's what they do. It's their living. They're commercializing the, the Lord's name and they make their livings off that. And so, well, I don't make a salary as a preacher, but I'm making my millions off my books and my videos. Yeah, they're commercializing his name. Can you imagine? I mean, I, I can't even imagine. If I decided to charge for all the info he's given me all these years and say, look, the Lord just de described heaven to me by my book if you want to know what it is. You know? I can't imagine. 
you know, because what he tells me, I tell his people, you know, when he anoints you for something, if he anoints you as a messenger or an emissary or a rabbi, uh, teacher, um, that's an anointing. And, and, and you're responsible for that. You're going to account. You're going to account for that. You have to account for that. Uh, what are you going to do? Say, well, you know, I put it in a book and tried to sell it. They wouldn't buy it, so it's their fault. So you don't know what, they don't have the information. <laughs> it isn't going to work like that. You know, these people are not anointed. They're not, they're not appointed by him. And, and there's nothing that they have to say that I would think would be worth paying for. Uh, because it's not from him. It's from their, from their own wisdom, their own thoughts. Okay. You've heard what she said about commercializing. Now, I'm not trying to pick on the Christian Truthers channel, but rather just trying to wake them up. Like I tried with Jonathan Kleck, but made no progress. And it's most likely going to fail because they believe, as the church is taught, that the church is the elect, who cannot be deceived. They have no clue that that is the deception. Therefore, they don't have to seek the truth because they already know all there is to know and cannot be deceived because the Bible has all the answers. Which again, it does, but not the way most think it does. Yes, it is infallible, but not because every word is truth, but because every word is included in it because Father allowed it to be. And it all serves His purpose, which you won't realize until you seek truth only from Him, as I'd stated earlier. Now, as long as the masses believe Paul is legit, they have no reason to discredit Kanye's conversion. So, the second verse, same as the first, is working like a charm, 2,000 years later. Kanye's recent visit to Joel Olstein's Lakewood Church in Houston spoke volumes, at least to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear. Now, you've probably heard me speaking about megachurch televangelists like Joel Olstein, Benny Hinn, Kenneth Copeland, Billy Graham. If not, they are Paul's disciples, who get foolish virgins to attend their services by the droves every sun god day, as if it's a sporting event or even a rock concert. In either case, Louche is fully present and in the driver's seat. Just more like those autonomous cars, though. And if you've noticed, Kanye's Sunday service is only about the feel-good aspect of Christianity, which is where church has been heading for quite some time now. Now, Sherry had been screaming this from the mountaintops for years. Listen to what she'd said in the included highlighted pieces on the topic. And see if you can draw parallels to what not only Paul had done through his gospel of grace, but what the likes of Kanye is doing now. Again, the link will be included in the description, and I'd highly recommend everyone reading this article in its entirety. Okay, the section that I'm going to be reading is called The New Age Assault on Christianity. The message of success and self-esteem has become so important in the church today that it has taken the place of sound doctrine, which, for many, seems too radical and old-fashioned to be taken seriously in this day and age. Christ said that he came to call, quote-unquote, sinners to repentance. Yet the churches are not preaching sin and repentance. It has been replaced with feel-good theologies and things that are positive. Sin is too negative and doesn't fill the offering plates. Christianity may well be facing the greatest challenge in its history. A series of powerful and growing seductions that are subtly changing biblical interpretations and undermining the faith of millions of people. Most Christians are scarcely aware of what is happening, and much less do they understand the issues involved. The seduction is surprisingly easy. It does not take place as an obvious frontal assault from rival religious beliefs, that would be vigorously resisted. Instead, it comes to some Christians in the guise of faith-producing techniques for gaining spiritual power and experiencing miracles and to others as self-improvement psychology for fully realizing human potential. 
Many have taken for granted the comfort zone of their churches without realizing the enemy isn't outside the gates. He is within our midst. He has so infiltrated our camp that many simply no longer can tell an enemy from a friend or truth from heresy. What's happening to our church today? The new age of disgraces. A time when many of our own church leaders have embraced positive thinking and faith-producing techniques for gaining spiritual power. Now listen to this. The underlying theme is that by creating your own reality and living in your own dream world, there would be no thoughts of sin, accountability, and judgment. No thought of placing God's will above your own as you conjure up visions of materialistic possessions under the guise of faith. The Blab and Grab It seminars in, quote, How to Write Your Own Ticket with God, end quote, by thinking certain thoughts, speaking certain words, or visualizing goals, are eagerly attended by thousands. True Christian faith has no comparison to this kind of New Age, quote-unquote, faith. Don't be deceived, for this faith is also known as visualization, guided imagery, and witchcraft. The Apostle Peter said, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time. Positive thinking or positive Christianity has no room for sin, repentance, or guilt. In fact, it is merely occultism dressed in Christian language virtually taking over America. Those who promote positive thinking, possibility thinking, and positive confession are among the most influential church leaders and preachers in the country. Almost any positive belief supports the delusion of infinite human potential, throws in self-esteem and self-worth, and concern itself with social justice through humanistic efforts. The kingdom mandate of some denominations plays into this facade as well. The Lord is not waiting for us to build his kingdom on this earth. However, Satan is. When the real Messiah returns, he is coming with a sword to judge and destroy. And not until this wicked earth is consumed will he build his own reign here on earth. Today we are also seeing an increase in the preoccupation with self where humility is out and self-esteem is in. When scripture speaks of self, it usually commands self-denial, self-control, and condemns self-worship. It does not teach self-love, self-assertion, self-esteem, self-forgiveness. Instead, it teaches us to turn ourselves to Christ. Yahushua said we are to deny ourselves and take up his cross and not be self-seeking. The self-help theologies in the churches today are deceiving millions who are perhaps unknowingly placing themselves above God. Now the only correct self-image comes from viewing God, Father Yahuwah, not ourselves. And it isn't flattering, but it changes lives and turns us from ourselves to Him. Today such biblical truths are considered psychologically damaging to one's self-esteem. Now, it's not an outward assault on Christianity that the New Ages are seeking. They are actually succeeding quite well with their inward subversion of New Age doctrine and philosophy into Christian theology. Gee, where have I heard that before? As I've mentioned before in other videos, Paul infiltrated Yahushua's ministry called The Way through a hijacking, creating his spin-off religion called Christianity. So convincingly, well at least they killed off anyone who was opposed to his doctrines, that it's still going very strongly today. So why not just do it again? The churches weren't the wiser for it before, so they won't question it this time around either. After all, it's a new age, and the Bible is outdated, right? It's time to pimp my sermon so it's more relatable for these past few generations, right? I know. How about getting an extremely popular rapper to do it? It's basically the same theology as the early church had, right? Wrong. That's the New Age movement. Coming in virtually undetected because most everyone is spiritually asleep.
Now, as I've said in other videos, but if you're new to this channel, this obviously will be the first time you've heard it. Most Christians don't see any issue with attending Sun God Day service because of generational indoctrination. They've never taken the time to do research on why it was maliciously changed from Father's seventh day of the week to the first day by way of Rome's Emperor Constantine in 320 AD, or even that it's been changed at all, would probably be the most common response. But all other Christian denominations simply followed suit. Enough generations go by and voila, nobody's the wiser. They believe it's just always been Sunday. After all, that's the day most people are off from work, so it just makes sense. Never considering who had really created a work schedule for the sheep. Thanks in large part to Pope Gregory's hijacking of Father's lunar calendar to make way for his much more popular, by way of infiltration, Gregorian calendar, which is what most use today. Now most Christians don't see an issue with celebrating December 25th as the birth of the sun. Because again, due to generational indoctrination, as I've mentioned in previous videos, that day is the birth of the sun, S-U-N, any number of sun gods, including Jesus. It's a few days after winter solstice, which is typically on December 22nd, which is when the sun is at its weakest. So, like a resurrection, the sun is reborn a few days later, when the daytime once again becomes longer than the nights. What's a few days after the 22nd? Why December 25th is the pagan holiday known as Saturnalia. Put it all together and you get Paul's Church of Laodicea, which is the lukewarm church that Yahushua spits out of his mouth. They're neither hot, as in the faithful and obedient, like the Church of Philadelphia, or cold, like atheists, Satanists, Mormons, Jehovah Witness, Muslims, etc. That's why most Christians won't have an issue with Kanye's transformation. Now, when one renounces Satan after selling their soul, Father will accept them into heaven because he knows it will cost them their physical body life and everything of this world for doing so. Just like those left behind to be refined in the tribulation period will experience when they discover that they have to lose their heads as martyrs to prove their faith to Father Yahweh. Now when Sherry had explained in her ministry, despite every evil that Carrie and Hillary had committed during their lifetimes to further their brand, that they were actually in heaven, I was confused as to how that could be. And I'll be honest, part of me was a little resentful to hear that. But then it occurred to me, whether you're willing to be beheaded during the tribulation period or sacrificed when renouncing Satan, it amounts to the same thing. You're showing your faith by choosing Father Yahuwah, even if for the first time. He knows you're willing to give everything up on this planet to die for him, just like martyrs who weren't necessarily believers during their lifetime until it was time to choose between accepting the mark of the beast or refusing it, leading to their deaths. It's a lot different when knowing you're going to be killed for your decision than not knowing you're actually going to die due to a bad decision for, say, getting behind the wheel when drunk. Yes, the decision was solely yours to make, but you didn't do it knowing the outcome, like those who renounced it. Now that's why I made the video, Celebs Can Renounce Satan, shortly thereafter coming to that realization because it hit me. Father wants everyone to choose him. We as watchmen should want as many souls turned back to Father and be heaven bound as possible, regardless of their transgressions while here on earth. So that's what I'm doing, making them, as in celebrities, Lucifer's stars, aware of the choice they still have after being deceived into believing Lucifer actually decides if you go to hell or not. He is the father of lies, remember. He's only living up to expectations. Again, I'll repeat what I've said in at least one previous video. Believing Lucifer runs hell is like believing the President of the United States is the most powerful man on the planet. In both cases, a much bigger power is calling all the shots.
So I'm sure some of you are saying about now. Okay, you just contradicted yourself, Chad, saying Jim Carrey renounced. So why can't Kanye? Oh, but he can. And he may very well have already done so. But he cannot live to tell about it, and certainly not live to convince the masses that he has quote-unquote seen the light, a la Paul, and converted, a la Paul. Once Lucifer has lost you to renouncement and denouncement, he has no use for you. Begrudgingly, he knows your soul is going back to Father because he has no say in the matter where your soul ends up. He just tricks people into believing he does. So at that point, you're expendable to him. So what does that tell you? I'll tell you. What you're seeing now is either a cloned Kanye or a fallen angel reptilian behind the wheel, still using his brand in order to keep his millions of fans asleep. Or, there's an evil agenda behind this whole charade, and his handlers are calling the shots. With this all happening in the end times, I cannot be surprised by this. It's already mentioned in the Bible what's going to happen in the end times. Are you starting to see the big picture yet? Or did that just muddy the waters even more? Please bear with me if you've made it this far. As I've said before, in order to understand what's really going on on this planet, you have to be willing to consider anything as possible, including the most unthinkable, heinous acts of presumed to be fictitious evil you could ever imagine. Because trust me, it's really happening outside of your vivid imagination. Now with that said, the biggest issue with scenario number one is most people are still asleep and have no clue about human cloning, despite it being all over the silver screen and TV now, hiding the truth in plain sight. So they're not likely to believe that that's actually the case with Kanye, meaning there's only one other answer that they can come up with. He has actually converted, bringing people to Jesus, who again is a well-kept fabricated secret hidden by the RCC, Roman Catholic Church to keep the real son, Yahushua ben David, hidden from society. So why should Kanye be any different when they've believed Paul is legit their entire lives? See how we've come full circle during these videos? Look at it this way. Seeing how many networks have carried Kanye's transformation story really says all there needs to be said, if you are awake. I mean, think about it. Who controls the media? The Rothschilds. Who is Satan's right-hand man? The Rothschilds. Who controls the music industry? The Rothschilds. Now, why would the Rothschilds want Kanye to convert to Christianity, appearing to denounce their god, Lucifer? Because they know the truth about Paul's religion, and that it's the biggest cult in the world. Yet very few are the wiser. Just like Obama and Kanye's boy Jay-Z, for instance, they know what side Jesus is really on, so they can praise him all day long without fear of repercussion from their God I and his minion. God is the one and only true living God, the creator of heaven and the universe. First of all, I, 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 I agree Jesus Christ is the Lord. Uh, the, I believe in that. Have them try praising Yahushua's name and see what happens. Trust me, they can't because they're not allowed to. The same reason celebs never thank Father Yahweh during their acceptance speeches. God is a mere title that you can assign to anyone you worship. So what the masses don't know cannot hurt them because they believe what they've been mind-controlled into believing. That God can only mean the Most High God. Same for Lord, when Lord actually means Baal. And why it's always in glossy caps in the Bible. And why the court of law has you swear on a Bible that they've specifically selected because they know it doesn't include Father's actual name. So essentially you're unknowingly committing blasphemy by swearing on a Bible that has Lord in it. How sick and twisted is that? But hey... 
They'd never think of corrupting father's word. Yeah, right. He allowed for it to happen to test his children, just like he'd done in the garden when evil infiltrated that too. Starting to see a correlation yet? Now, I believe that Kanye will be a strong proponent for pushing the upcoming Romans 13 sermon to all the 501c3 churches. As I've explained, the real purpose behind Paul's trust the government passage in Romans 13 video. Kanye has a network reach of way more people than Paul had ever had during his conversion, which is what makes Kanye's conversion so concerning to those of us in the know. But makes total sense considering again, we are in the end times. Paul pushed Paul doctrine in the New Testament, and Kanye is pushing Jesus doctrine now, which will undoubtedly lead to a one world religion as in Chrislam, which Pope Francis has been pushing for quite some time now. They just needed a hip rapper to help lead the way down the wide road to destruction. Now they tried getting Bieber to do it not too long ago, but I guess that fell through, at least for now. But something tells me he may just join Kanye in his crusade in the near future, as well as other celebrities who will suddenly see the light too. Again, you cannot live to tell about your renouncing of Satan after selling your soul, which is even a verse in one of Kanye's songs, unless you're being used for a very deceptive and malevolent purpose. Now Kanye, if you or anyone in your posse ever run across this video, and you should if you've really converted because Father guides his children to the truth when they seek it, I've got a proposition for you. I developed these original lyrics that I'll include at the end of this video. Now I'd written and posted them in an earlier video, and as I said then, I don't care about credit. You can make all the money off them you can. I just want to get the word out. And who better to do that than Father's new shining star who's on the biggest stage that I could ever hope for to spread the truth. But we both know you won't because of who controls you and or is behind the wheel. Now before all of you buy into this major deception, please really consider what I've said here. Pray on it most definitely. Always use discernment and test the spirits. I'm no exception to that. Nobody is. As stated in the center verse of the Bible, always trust father over man. God bless. Now, you know, Satan mimics everything about father, the father and his kingdom. And typically in the Northwest, not too far from EP, what I call EP, Enoch's planet in the West, is his Capricorn starship. And his Capricorn starship is an azure blue, uh, estimated to be about 30 miles high. Uh, and it's located in the Northwest, and it's also known as Allah's place of habitation. It's where Allah lives. Allah and Sananda are one and the same person. They're one and the same being. As you'll see the Satanists celebrating this, uh, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian calling their daughter Northwest. That's, that's why, because they're calling it after Satan's star ship in the Northwest. You also have uh, someone else naming their, their, their child's children Moon or the connotations to the moon after the moon got Allah. <laughs>